Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Open Lab. Um, Jeff here, as always, with Kim. Hey, Kim. Now, Kim, you look a little distracted. Oh, sorry, hey, Jeff. Hi. You know what? Hi. I'm so busy. I was so excited. Yeah. So I kept thinking, I was like, you know, I was going to go to another show at the Double Deuce. And I'm like, but I have all this there stuff that I have to bring. And it's oh, hard yeah. to find a good bag to, you know, put everything in. But look, I found this really cool inventory lab bag. There you go. There you go. It's canvas. It's got black handles. It's very Perfect. cool. And I can fit things like my inventory lab umbrella. Nice. And we've seen this before. Inventory oh, yes. lab cup. I can fit all Gotta sorts of stuff one. in this bag. I know. Yeah, that's awesome. Right? So if you're if you're interested in uh, maybe winning some swag, make sure you comment. If you're on Facebook watching us or YouTube, just uh, put your name in the comments there or just say hey, and we'll uh, enter you in the drawing for today's swag giveaway, which will be at the end. So make sure you stick around to the end. Um, but today, Kim, pretty excited. We have a special guest. So... We're going to uh, jump right in so we get plenty of time to, to uh, pick her brain about everything bundling. Sounds so, good. Yeah. So if you're not aware, we're, uh, our guest today is Kristen Ostrander. She, uh, she's been around the e-commerce field for around 17 years. She's the creator of mommyincome.com. She's also host of uh, a pretty special uh, podcast get a lot of information from that podcast. It's called the Amazon Files Podcast. And uh, she's got this unique wholesale bundle approach to Amazon. It's called the Wholesale Bundling System. And she's going to talk about that today. And so without further ado, let's uh, bring her in so we can have a chat. Hey, Kristen. Hey. hey, Kristen. How are you? Thanks so much for having me. Thanks yeah, so much thanks for, for being joining here. Us. Yeah, this is awesome. Glad you could uh, so. make I know, the time. I'm sure you're Schedule is very busy, so we really appreciate you taking the time to come on and, and talk to everybody. I know you've got some great advice and great information to give out. So um, so let's just jump into it. Um, if you don't mind, and again, I am sure you've you know told your story a, a million times, but for anyone who hasn't heard it, can you just tell us a little bit about how you got into selling on Amazon and you know, kind of where you were at at that point in your life? Certainly. So it was, a, it feels like it eons ago. Um, it was almost 18 years ago. And uh, my husband and I had decided that we didn't want to be ships passing in the night. Um, I went to college and realized that there was nothing there for me. <laughs> um, I, we had a couple of kids really young. I was married just out, uh, just out of high school. And um, out of necessity, I needed to bring in income. And while I was uh, went to college, they kind of said, don't come back until you declare a major. And I couldn't declare a major because I just feel like there was nothing that I really wanted to do. Uh, so I started to resell on eBay. Uh, usually just by necessity. I needed to make some income and I wanted to stay home with my wonderful children. So I started to sell some things on eBay, which then um, turned into very successful retail arbitrage for a while. I was doing yard sale flips and things like that. And then about 2009, uh, 2008, actually late 2008, Q4, I uh, discovered Amazon and how amazing it was to be a reseller there. Uh, so much different platform than eBay. And I was kind of hooked ever since. Okay, great. And so what do you think would be maybe the most important things that anyone contemplating going to Amazon maybe for the first time should know before they start? What would be the best bit of advice you could give someone who isn't doing it, but who is considering it? Wow, that's a great question. Um, I really think if you're really considering on the fence, don't go into it with a get rich quick attitude. Don't go into it with thinking this is going to be just small, one small side hustle because it really has long term sustainability if you do it correctly. So what uh, the number one thing I would be is, is commit yourself, commit yourself to a year of learning and also pick a couple of people to follow that you really resonate and relate to someone that you that's easy to listen to that that resonates and relates with you because so many people jump into watching every youtube video out there every <laughs> single thing in every single facebook group and they're getting mixed messages and so the one person says this thing over here one person everybody's got a different perspective right and so um pick who you align with the most and just kind of track with them because there's just so much out there and you're all you're going to do is build yourself a 
prison of of uh, a lot of knowledge and a whole lot less action because you don't know what to do because everyone's telling you something different. Yeah, I can only imagine. And and everyone's probably at a different point and, you know, coming from a different background. And like you said, um, what works for one person may not work for another person, depending on circumstances. Um, what's one of the biggest or maybe several biggest changes that you've noticed in Amazon over the years from when you started to now? <laughs> The Amazon was like the wild west when I first started, right? <laughs> it's like anything goes. And, you know, this is a time when I started on Amazon where you didn't even have to put FNSKU labels on your items. You could literally just list them, box them up all into one shipment to one warehouse. Can you imagine? <laughs> and send it to one place. And so I started with, with used <laughs> books and it was a time where you didn't even have to label anything. Of course, that, that was a rapid change and that happened and you started labeling. And um, so between that and then all the different policies and regulations. I remember the Amazon blacklist is what I call it. When at first they used to, when they suspended people, you were blacklisted. You were literally like <laughs> never allowed to breathe the word Amazon ever again, if you did something wrong and um, offended Amazon in some way. Um, so they have definitely changed some policies there. But over time, what I've realized is that they've really gotten um, really particular about protecting brands and protecting um, people from intellectual property violence, uh, and in, yeah, intellectual property and different things like that. So they're making it uh, a little harder to do things people used to do, things like you know retail arbitrage or even thrifting in such a way that um, they really are trying to protect their customers first and foremost. That has not changed. Uh, they're just being a lot more sensitive about uh, verifying people's identity. So fraud is at a minimum because they've been sued many times and their pocketbook yeah. does not like it. So policies <laughs> always follow a lawsuit. <laughs> Got it. And uh, so now, obviously, uh, we've talked before, and I know a little bit about you know how you got started. I know you started doing, like you said, thrifting and retail arbitrage. And um, what do you think was the biggest adjustment that you had to make um, for your business by when you moved into wholesale? What were what were some of the things that were different that you maybe had to get used to, or you know, really uh, made an impact on the business? Well, it was mostly positive impacts. Um, with retail arbitrage, what I love, what everybody loves is probably the treasure hunting and then finding things at killer margins, right? I mean, you know, there's there's hardly anything you can buy for a dollar and flip for, you know, $19.99 or more when you're finding it at a thrift shop or, or a place like, um, like your clearance section or whatever. So retail arbitrage, like I said, is very profitable and lucrative, however, the scalability of it is really, really difficult. So if you get to a point where we got to a point where we were doing so well that we needed to figure out what was next because we couldn't, we couldn't fill our carts enough with items <laughs> to sell. We were, we were so successful with that. But the problem was we realized we were just kind of building ourselves a prison. And instead of um, really growing our business, we were trapping ourselves into having to go out and pounding the pavement every single week, month, day to, in order to build our virtual shelves. And that was, wasn't going to work for us long term. We didn't want to be um, tied down to that kind of inventory. And so we started looking into wholesale. And uh, as I present to you with bundles a little bit later, you'll see what happens there is that it was a great thing because we didn't have to go out searching for all of our inventory, but we did run into some problems with a lot of margins, uh, margins being super thin and competition being fierce. Got it. And um, did you find it a challenge too, when you were doing retail arbitrage where, you know, if you had something, I know you, you started in books. Um, and so if you had something that, you know, maybe sold you know, was was in demand, but you only had one copy of, or if you went thrifting, there's only, you know, there's maybe one unique thing that you find, but then people maybe want more. So did you find that that was a much easier thing to, you know, to supply what, pe what people wanted on a regular basis, obviously, when you moved into, into um, wholesale? Absolutely. It was moving into wholesale. Uh, that was the major benefit is that you find something that was a great seller and you could just hit repeat order and send emails and stuff would arrive at either your warehouse, your door, or even the Amazon warehouse itself. And you can kind of circumvent a lot of touch points there. But the problem was that if you can find that snazzy thing, so can, you know, 500 or 5,000, right. 5 million of your seller <laughs> friends, because they have the same software programs and they have the same thing. So, 
um, so although that can solve some of the problems, the um, the competition ended up being fierce. And sometimes you've got you have this like false sense of margin when you're going into wholesale. You think I can buy this at the store for ten dollars, so the wholesale cost must be five bucks, right? It has to be at least fifty mm percent -hmm. off. And then you open the catalogs and get the price list and realize that it's about seven dollars. <laughs> and then with the fees on Amazon, you're actually making negative twelve cents. <laughs> and so that's really discouraging to some people, which is why um, we found that very same problem. And because of that same problem, that's why we started creating bundles, because we realized if we can put multiple pieces together that seem to make sense for the customer, then we can put more margin in our pocket. We can make one package. We can pay one Amazon fee instead of multiples. And instead of playing the big volume game with um, just trying to push a ton of really low margin wholesale stuff, that we could more look at uh, the value game in the ROI game versus a, a ton of volume in order to just kind of make minimum margins. Gotcha. Now, do you still occasionally go do some retail arbitrage just for the fun of it? <laughs> I'm guessing you lie. probably do, right? <laughs> okay, so not going to lie, I do <laughs> scan things um, on a regular basis. I still have my my Scoutify 2 app on my phone. It's probably still one of my favorite things because I can't help myself. Um, I'm kind of just a, a treasure hunt addict. And so I actually use that more either a to give people some bolo opportunities that I'm not going to use, or um, more for I, I do still have an eBay store. And so that's kind of my outlet for treasure oh, hunting. Okay. Because honestly, um, with the retail arbitrage, um, it's very, very minimal, I would say maybe 1% of anything we do, because of the risk factor. And because our business is so strong and sustainable and, and um, long it has such longevity to have something retail arbitrage that I can't exactly, you know, necessarily prove the supply chain or don't have invoices for. Um, it's not worth risking my entire account for maybe something that I don't have the proper receipt to show Amazon. So I prefer not to risk my entire account that I've built for a couple of those things. So I try to steer clear, but that part of me still does the scanning and scouting and looking because <laughs> I cannot help it. So I use usually mostly that for eBay. Got it. Got it. Um, so for anyone out there who maybe is at a place where you were, you know, where they're doing retail arbitrage, they're doing thrifting, they're not quite at a point where, you know, they're think even thinking about something like wholesale. Um, and like you said, it's it's kind of a, you know, to have real success, it's kind of the long game that you're playing. What, what kind of advice would you give someone who's thinking, well, you know, I do all right with this, but I really want to take it to the next level. I mean, obviously, you know, your wholesale bundle approach, you know, there's, that's a whole program. Um, would you have any, uh, obviously we'll, we'll get into that so you can show people exactly what that's all about, but just in terms of general business decisions, what would you, what would you tell people to start, you know, to lay the groundwork to maybe take things to the next level? To lay the groundwork for what you want to do at any point is to really decide what, where do you want this to go? And where do you want this to be bigger? Because some people's goal isn't to have a million dollar business. It, it is literally to just pay for, you know, their kids soccer camp or something like that. So when it comes to that, you have to figure out what it is you really want. If you're talking quit your nine to five and do e commerce full time, you need to look at your business as a sustainable business model. And what happens with retail arbitrage is a lot of risk involved, but you don't just jump ship and say, Okay, I'm going to stop doing this and start doing this. So that's why I bring the 8020 into it. So if you're spending 10 hours a week on retail arbitrage right now, and you've got your nine to five, and you're doing something else, you you just split your time 80 20. So right now, if you're doing retail arbitrage, 80% of your time goes to retail arbitrage. And then you dedicate 20% of the time for the next thing, the new thing, the wholesale thing. And so you're not flip flopping it right away, you're starting this little small thing over here. And when as you take those small steps, you start to do 70 30, because as you're succeeding with the wholesale or bundles or whatever private label, whatever's next for you, then you can start uh, balancing that out and doing a lot less of this and a little bit more of this until you get the balance. Um, so, so really that's the catalyst for any change you're making in your business is balancing it out because you just don't want to jump in with both feet and start off right away doing that major change. You want to just incrementally change from one thing to another. That's great advice. I actually am thinking to myself, you know, that could work in so many different areas of life, not just business. Uh, if you're looking to make a major change, that's a great way to transition into something like that. Uh, I really like that. Um, now, we talked before, so I know that, you know, you have been going to trade shows for years. 
Um, if someone was out there and said, you know, maybe I should go to some of those trade shows to maybe to, to see what's out there, to see whether or not I want to take things to the next level or what else I can do to expand the business. Um, are there resources that you've used other than just the fact that you've been to um, trade shows? Like how would someone figure out what the best trade shows to go to would be? Well, um, we do have a, a trade show stocking video. So if you if y'all don't want to to go to a trade show, but you want to kind of do it online, there's a whole um, bobbyandcome.com slash 100, the number 100. So it's okay. a free video real quick, but I'll give you a brief synopsis of that is really to um, go on their website first and look at who is exhibiting and what kind of products they represent and check out their websites first and check out the products that they have. And, and before you do that, because the main thing to do about going to trade shows is not as much about product is it is about relationship because once you have established a race relationship at a face-to-face -face, even with somebody you have a face to a name and you can either pick up the phone or email and say hey i met you at asd or i met you at the dallas market and um i would love to open this account over here or you know seeing things face to face is is my personal preference i'm a people person and i like to make those connections i feel like once i meet someone it's over like we have a connection and that means you know me and i know you and that gives you a little bit more of a foot in the door um, but when you're when you're looking for that, you have to decide what kind of products and things that you're already carrying or what you would like to carry. Because people oftentimes go to a trade show and they're just overwhelmed and they gather all the things and then they come home and watch Netflix because they have 1,400 <laughs> catalogs and they don't know where to start. So I often tell people start with three to five vendors only and use three to five vendors, three to five catalogs at first, and really start looking at the products that they offer, the things that they have, and really dive deep into those things. Because there's tons of catalogs are so untouched um, by people because they just haven't spent the time with some of the, you know, outliers. And th there really is a, a richness in being able to focus on really one lane at a time. And I've never seen anyone carry an entire catalog full of one vendor <laughs> stuff. So I dare somebody to try that because I think there can be some major success in that. Absolutely. And of course, I mean, you know, right now, there I, I don't know how many conferences are actually still doing things in person, but I'm hopeful that maybe as the year progresses and into next year that, you know, we do start seeing some of those big events, you know, uh, happening again. So fingers crossed for that. Um, so I would like you to tell us a little bit of this is one of my this may be my favorite part of your uh, business story, actually. Can you tell us about your mom? Mm -hmm. and how your mom got involved and became your business partner. For sure. So my my mom saw as I was doing retail arbitrage back in the day, she saw that I was shopping for a living and she was a single parent. I have two younger sisters. Um, and so she was still parenting them actively as teenagers. And she was working full time at a fine dining restaurant establishment and very overworked. Um, and she's really a hard worker. So it's easy to take advantage of people like that. Right. So I saw this and she came to me and she's like, you're shopping for a living. And I really just she, she loves shopping. So she's like, can I just come on with you on one of these trips and kind of see exactly what you're doing. And so I show her, I was scanning things and, you know, putting them in the cart and finding it out. And she latched onto it really quickly. And she's like, give me that scanner thing. I'm going to try this. And so we've been shopping a couple of times. She's like, I would love to really help you with this. I'm like, great, because I am overwhelmed and I cannot do all this myself anymore. So the two of us kind of became one. And she did this double hustle for, I want to say almost 14 months it was she worked both all day for us and retail solutions what we were doing here and then she she went to her not her night job and right. she did that for 14 months until we were able to establish two household income with our business and so we've been partners ever since that is fantastic i mean my my mom and i that was our thing was shopping not for profit necessarily uh but just doing that so that's that's a great story thanks for sharing yeah, that i love that story thank you Great. And I, uh, you know, if you could tell us a little bit more about, you know, the classes that you offer, I know you have a presentation. I'd love to see that. Um, and just give yeah, people as much information about, you know, how to access not only your classes, but any other resources you have, that would be terrific. Sure thing. So I'm going to, I'll talk about that. If you wanted me to get to my presentation, I can go sure. ahead and start there. Yeah, and then if there's any other questions, I'll, I, you guys just hang in there, like buckle up. Cause I do talk yeah. really fast. I try to slow it down, but it's really hard for me. So uh, so <laughs> much information here that I want to share with you. So I'm going to be a little bit quick and I'm going to skip my normal intro. Um, but I'm just letting you know, I have 18 years of e-commerce experience. I've been doing this a long time. I've been wholesale bundling now since 20. 
15. And I really love um, what I do here. So I want to give you guys the uh, what for. All right. So this is what I want you guys to think about as I'm giving you um, the details about wholesale bundling. It just imagine what your life would be like if you're generating seven figures while working just a few days from anywhere in the world. I mean, sounds like a fantasy, right? Uh, just imagine that for a second, because we all have something in mind that we can think of like, well, how would my life change? If that was a thing. <laughs> Well, just think about that. So just a little bit of fun facts about me. Um, I am a huge Kansas City Chiefs fan. I'm the host of the Amazon Files podcast. So make sure you tune into that. I am a certified black belt. So don't make me mad. No, just, just <laughs> um, 18 years of e-commerce online selling experience. And in the past five years, I've generated over $5 million using my uh, wholesale bundles, um, revenue from directly from wholesale bundles. And my superpower is helping thousands of people start and grow legitimate and sustainable businesses on Amazon. So that's a little bit about me. And, um, oh, this is more about me. This is more about my e-commerce journey. We already talked about some of these things. eBay, Amazon with used books, retail arbitrage, begin wholesaling 2014, tried private label with a little bit of a fail in 2015. We'll talk about that. Um, and then started creating bundles also in 2014. Uh, that was, of course, starting really slow and starting that 80-20. This was probably more like 99.1% at the time, but you had to start somewhere. Uh, we do have a registered trademark and brand registry as of 2016, which I highly recommend. And um, we have sold over $5 million in wholesale bundles in the past five years and growing. So, First custom private label product was 2020. I mean, who launches a product during a pandemic? We do, <laughs> because we can't predict a pandemic. So we there just kind of went through it. But what you're not gonna see from me is what you see from a lot of other people out there with like fancy Ferraris and like messed up crazy inflated or maybe unrealistic numbers for the average Joe of us here. Um, this not, I'm, I'm a work at home mom from the Midwest. You're not gonna find any of that jazz here. But what you will find is success stories coming out your ears. As a matter of fact, shout out to some of my um, clients that I see here in the chat. Thanks you guys for representing mommy income. Um, Real results with real people, um, real people who have used the wholesale bundles system to quit their nine to five jobs. This is Michelle. Uh, anyone you see here, you'll be able to hear their stories on the Amazon Files podcast. We always interview our top success stories um, on there. So this is Michelle. She went, started selling on Amazon 2015 after the wholesale bundles workshop in 2017. She was able to quit her high paying corporate job uh, to spend more time with her son and husband at home and is working on on wholesale bundles uh, full-time at her house. And this is Al. I met Al uh, what, right before the pandemic at an Amazon event. And he had been bundling long before, uh, about the same time as me, but he started on eBay a long ago and started building bundles in 2017. And he is consistently, um, exclusively using bundles. And his quote is, it doesn't matter how much we like the product. If we can't bundle it, we walk away from it. I'm like, yes, Al, that's exactly what we're doing. His goal and why is because his financial future. So he really wants to have his control of his own financial future. So yes, of course, this is me. This is the, the sunshines and rainbows, right? Of like, oh, this is my good fancy story. Not Ferraris, but I have a huge family. I'm such a people person and I love every single person that you see in these pictures here. But this is a little snapshot of, of me and my, um, my life here. So, but the thing is, is that it's, it wasn't, it wasn't always this way. <laughs> it was not always this way at all. This is actually very recent. Um, in, uh, in 2010, my husband was injured at work and he was denied workman's compensation and we went from a normal income to almost zero. We uh, were, un although I had a business, it wasn't enough to sustain a family of five uh, and we ended up in home foreclosure in 2012. But wait, there's more. <laughs> As I was going through this, I decided to take on a partner because mm -hmm. I saw my success and wanted to invest. And with the Shady Partnership plus embezzlement, I ended up starting over in 2014 with $1,100 and my mother. So it's not always sunshines and rainbows. But 
at the same time, there is results. And although it was a very winding road, we did go from foreclosure to seven figures. It took a while. You will never hear from me that this is fast money or quick money or get rich quick. Um, it was definitely a journey. And this is was part of the journey that's still growing. So why do I tell you all this? Are you really ready to learn the strategy that generates all these things? Because there was a strategy. There was This wasn't throwing spaghetti at the wall and hope it stuck. We really were strategic about how we were going to rebuild the company. How were we going to get um, sustainable income? Because this was really all I had. I'll be honest. And if I can do this, anyone can do this. Because there's something I didn't tell you. I've never been to a job interview. Never. I've gotten jobs by basically filling out the Taco Bell application and saying, when can you start working? I've never been to a job interview. I dropped out of college my first year and a half. I had no prior business experience before I sold my first thing on, online. And I started as a stay-at-home mom with $100. So if I can do this, anybody can do this. Anybody can run an Amazon business, no matter what model you choose. It's not for everyone. But it is for those who want to have certain things. And maybe my presentation. Oh, there we go. I'm like, maybe it just doesn't want to work. <laughs> okay. It's not for everyone. This is not a set it and forget it. There's no such thing, believe it or not. There's not a, okay, I'm going to arrive at this four hour work week and sit on the beach and like everything there. Uh, get rich quick is not in business whatsoever. And if you're looking to make your rent this month, <laughs> this is not the solution. You don't need a business, you need a job. <laughs> so um, if you want to grow long-term sustainability in e-commerce, you're going to need a system and a process. And I have a proven method and a framework that's definitely for you if this is where you want to head. So can you start small? Absolutely, I started with $100 and you can as well. And I will show you how this strategy is for those who are ready to commit who are ready to do all the things that they need to do to work hard. Oh, I love live presentations. <laughs> this is my favorite thing. It's like things don't work. I can just make stuff up. I mean, it doesn't oh, matter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can just literally make this up. Okay. <laughs> For any budget at any time, anyone who is tired of low margins, can I, can I, somebody in the chat just like type a one or an amen or a, or a something that says you're tired of low margins and high competition on Amazon? Because we all face that. If you're tired of retail arbitrage, or if you don't want to create private label products and go through that whole route and figure that out and create these, these really long things, or if you failed at private label products, how many of my clients have come to me and have failed at, they have a garage full of $25,000 worth of a wholesale or a, a private label product that now they don't know what to do with because it won't sell. This is for anyone who desires legitimate, proven, long-term sustainability on Amazon. So I'm going to tell you what I used to do. We went over this a little bit, but just to cover it, retail arbitrage and thrifting and online arbitrage, great business models for a short period of time. Cartloads full of profit, right? This is the dream. Cartloads full of profit. You pull into Walmart, you pull into Target, Best Buy, wherever. Is Best Buy even a thing? <laughs> and then they put products every week, all these places nationwide, fill the cartloads full of stuff and profit. But reality is running from store to store to store, gather inventory. This is not scalable. At some point, you either have to hire a ton of people and try to teach them how to source products the way you would. And let's be real. Like, no one's going to do it as good as we are, right? And 500 of your other friends are shopping the same clearance aisles and the same thing. And there's just tanking prices, race to the bottom, leaving no meat on the bones. You have to physically shop for your inventory daily, weekly, monthly. I know some of you guys know exactly what this feels like. Anybody want to raise their hand and say that? Yes. No freedom and no life. You are literally pounding the payment because you know what? You're going to be successful. There's plenty of profit in retail arbitrage. I will not tell you any different, but you're going to sacrifice your freedom. So let's give you an example. Trader Joe's, anyone, right? Everybody knows Trader Joe's. You can totally flip anything from Trader Joe's, right? Okay, so $10.73 for this wonderful cookie butter. Who do, I love cookie butter, by the way. Send me jars full. Like I will, you know, I didn't get this way watching people eat, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's the reality of your retail arbitrage, right? You have $10.73. It comes on here. You've got your Amazon freeze, your cost of goods. You get $3.99 is about the cost of this product. Your net profit is 75 cents. Okay, you're in the green, right? And this sells really well. But what happens is that you're making, let's go back for a second, you're making 75 cents. So what happens when I'll use my friend Rob because I see him here. What's up, Rob? 
Um, I see him here. So Rob decides he's going to come in here and he's going to say, well, I'm okay with 50 cents. So I'm going to lower this price by 25 cents. And um, all of a sudden we've got this race to the bottom and nobody's actually making profit. So there's just not a lot of wiggle room in this. And how many things do you have to sell at 75 cents in order to make real money? I mean, that's just not for me. So now what? There's a retail arbitrage is going to give us lots of competition and no life and no freedom. So now what do we do? Wholesale. Yay. This must be the answer. Okay. Let's take a look. Here's the dream. Access to unlimited supply of products and individual pro amazing margins. We're going to kill it. It's all going to be sunshines and rainbows. Millions of products to choose from. Fast, easy money. Right? Not so much unexpectedly slim margins after fees, competing with vendors and manufacturers and Amazon, hello, direct competition with Amazon, deepest pockets, they have, the deepest pockets get the biggest discounts on inventory. So when you see something that you can get at wholesale for $3 and you see somebody else selling it for $3, you know that they either got it for free, which is probably highly unlikely, or they just get better discounts than you. So that's a reality. Have you ever looked at a product and knew for sure that someone was losing money on it? You're like, how do they sell that for that price? There's no way they're making money. We've all said that. Here's the deal. Shopkins, that's a big thing. This was my first wholesale account, right? I literally thought I was gonna like, this was where I was gonna make the millions. I was gonna sell all the Shopkins in the world. This is way back in 2014, 15-ish. And I was like, okay, great. I can get these. They were selling like hotcakes until this, until I realized that these were 450 from the wholesaler at the biggest discount they were willing to give me and a single unit item was gonna lose me $1.92. Get real, that's not a business model. So, and that happens more and more often than you think at single unit items, either you're selling at very slim margins or you have to compete with Amazon or other pe people. So I thought, okay, the holy grail, the top of the food chain has gotta be this private label that everybody's talking about all the time, right? Okay, private label, let's do it. So this is the dream, creating a product with no competition. You're going to make millions. I'm so excited. They say it's simple. Do some research, buy on Alibaba, ship to Amazon, use PPC, make millions with no competition. Let's talk about the reality. The reality is it's a huge investment of time and money up front, and it takes time that required to build, manufacture, import, launch, and market. Did someone forget to tell you that you had to market a product that's brand new? Hmm. Unknown fact, the average private label product takes about 12 months to bring to the marketplace. And with minimum order quantities, C freight, product launching, PPC, most product private label products cost at least 15 grand to bring to the market. Can you tie up 15 grand right now for a year before you start making any money back? I certainly could not and even dare to say I cannot now. Does this sound familiar to anyone? I'm just going to take a drink of water while you say that this sounds familiar or not. Any of these concepts at all? Speaking mm -hmm. of that, I see those wholesale emails all the time. So yeah, very familiar. Yeah. Very familiar. So what happens? The biggest problem is competition is high on single unit items, no matter where you source them. You're sourced with them small or non-existent, you're gonna have small or non-existent margins. So how can we solve these common issues? What are we gonna do? How are we gonna make this long-term sustainable business model be real? We're gonna do it with wholesale bundles. What I call wholesale bundles, I've been saying this for years, is this poor man's private label. Not to offend anybody by saying poor, but I was the poor man trying to do private label and this was my solution. It was marrying wholesale and the thin margins with the idea of the, the less competition or zero competition of, of private label. How are we going to kind of get the best of both worlds? Aha, it's bundles. So what are bundles? Highly complementary products purchased from wholesale suppliers, aka you're not reinventing the wheel and creating a whole new product and concept, although that's, you know, encouraged. <laughs> so sold together in a way that provides value to the buyer while meeting a need or solving a problem for the customer. The customer is always the right answer at this point, because if you can solve their problem or meet a special need that they have, they pay you with dollar bills. So 
wholesales are highly complimentary products. You bundle a, kit, a product together and a kit pack or set. So you're creating custom packaging as well, which is not as scary as private label as, as much as you think, but this is how it's done. You buy the products from wholesale, different catalogs, uh, different places, and you put them together in a kit or pack or set. So you are essentially sending one product into Amazon. Here's an amazing example. My daughter wanted to start playing the ukulele and I know nothing about ukuleles and frankly, neither did she. So when she put this on her Christmas list, I had to go to the only place in the world that people buy most products, Amazon, and find something to put into her Christmas list. So I found this wonderful thing. Now I could have just bought a ukulele and called it that. Just, I don't know anything about it, add to cart. But these people made it so easy and convenient for me to buy all the things, even if I didn't need all the things. They provided a, a do you really need a tuner for this thing? I'm not sure, or a strap. I mean, it's like this big, right? But who cares? Because for 42 bucks and all these different colors, I put buy it now, solved my problem, and I went on with the rest of my life. Bundles create convenience for customers. Here's another one. This was this Christmas for my other daughter who wanted a Nintendo Switch so very badly. I had to search the ends of the earth to get a Nintendo Switch for this child this year. Just so you know, yeah, she's spoiled. Don't judge me. Okay, so she wanted these accessories for this, right? She wanted these accessories. She wanted not just the thing, but the kit and the this and the that and all the things. So someone, wonderful someone, created this wonderful Nintendo Switch console accessory pack with all the things in it. And for $16.99, it was a no-brainer. It took me all 30 seconds to put this in my cart, uh, swipe to the right of buy now and move on with my life. Speed, convenience, perfect. My son ended up about, getting the same thing for Christmas. <laughs> so kids, although I will say she she does, she plays Animal Crossing and is her favorite thing. And it teaches her so many skills. Like you have to mm -hmm. like work and earn money and then build stuff. It's fantastic. Um, so yay for video games. <laughs> it got us through 2020, okay? <laughs> yes. All the moms with kids know exactly what I mean. Okay, so. Um, so this is another wonderful thing. This luxurious um, spa set. So Mother's Day is coming up, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget your moms and wives and significant others. Um, so Mother's Day is coming up. This is a wonderful spa gift set that someone put together with their own private label products. So they're private labeling their lotions and things like that. But then they have this wonderful, beautiful bag that goes with it. This makes it really, really easy to buy a gift set for your mom or sister or someone that you love to give them a gift. So this is another perfect example of a wholesale bundle. So remember that wholesale example with the negative margin, the negative $1.92 from Shopkins? Yeah, here it is, right? Remember this? This makes it profitable. So you're adding a carrying case. Not only do you have your Shopkins, that's very convenient, you can sell that, but now that mom or child definitely needs a carrying case for these little buggers because they're kind of small like Legos and if you step on them, you hate yourself. So this is really what you need. So putting together a carrying case that's perfectly complementary with this Shopkins, they're both the same brand, they don't have to be, just to put that out there, but this is what you get for this wonderful bundle and look at the price now, see, yes, you're not making a killing here, but this is just an example of showing you that even those high, and honestly, these are really high wholesale prices. I don't love them, but they're truth. So I'm showing you. So now you've gone from negative $1.92 to $4 in profit. So just by adding a complimentary bundle uh, item to this, now you have a bundle and now you're making profit. So how can a bundle eliminate competition? Because I get this question all the time, Kristen, once you create this wonderful Shopkins bundle, then you, then all the people that have the same access to the same thing that you have can just jump on your bundle and start selling it. And you did all the hard work and they get to um, start tanking your price as well. Bundles have all the benefits of private label without all the risk and cost. See, you can own 100% of the buy box every time without direct competition. You can prevent that price tanking and hijackers by using what I call the value add item and packaging, which I will show you in a moment. And you can, li the listing protection you have with your own bundle brand. Also with my framework, I pride myself on not using PPC. Um, and I know Catherine, I don't know if she's still here or not, but I saw her in the chat here. And she is my wonderful, amazing case study who has launched what, five successful bundles so far in the past, you know, since November and zero PPC. And yet she's killing it. So um, it's, it is organic search without PPC required. 
and most people argue with that. So it means that you have all the benefits of the private label products without all the risk and cost and time. So you don't have to tie up $15,000 or even $10,000 or dare I say even $1,000 to create bundles. This means you can start with less money and less time and see results faster. So how do you put a bundle together, Kristen? Well, I'm so glad you guys asked that. You have to shift your mindset because guess what? How many of you guys are what we call, we're, we're all scanners, right? When we were first doing retail arbitrage, we have our phone or we have our little scan fob or, you know, there's probably things that you can like wear on your head now that like scan things with just like, I don't know, a blink of an eye. I mean, technology is beyond me. But you're, you're, you have to shift your thinking from just scanning and making a data-based decision to thinking about your customer first and the data second. So the who, what, when, where, why, and how of the product. Who's going to buy it? What are they going to use it for? Are they giving it? Are they keeping it? Are they using it as casual? Is it going to be something that's going to be high end and last long? Or is it disposable? All of those questions are very relevant to figure out the need of your customer. Research is absolutely key. And not just research, process driven research. Because how many times have we seen research that goes pew, pew, over here, over there, you have 1400 tabs open. And after eight hours, you literally have no product, but you've also seen 1412 cat videos. That's me. So we need a process for our research, right? Repeatable steps, make it easy for anyone to just say, what step am I on? What can I move forward with? This is my wholesale bundles framework. And this shows you from one to 12, obviously how some of them are secret sauce and have to be blocked off. Um, but here, you, this is where we start. And we start with a process driven research where we go through step by step by finding things. And this can be done with any catalog, any product, anywhere, anytime. If you have the steps, you can take one single product and figure out a profitable bundle for it. Process driven research. But how do you eliminate those competition? I mean, there's going to be competition, right? I've had people jump on bundles before I got smart enough to realize to do this next. Adding a unique item that is hard or impossible for other people to access. We do this by mixing vendors. So not just saying, okay, I've got all the Shopkins things. I'm going to put all those in one. Well, guess what? Someone else can do the very same thing. You can't brand it yourself. So you're going to run into trouble. Exclusive agreement with a vendor is also a possibility to try to negotiate with that, but that also takes a lot of policing and kicking people off, and that's kind of a nightmare, right? The private label or custom item is the value add item that you can add to your bundle to keep competition off forever. You can also use custom printing or custom packaging. And I, I, I'm like, I have that right here. I think I always keep one in the drawer. Oh, well, here we go. Custom packaging. So this is a poly bag that I printed. It's got mommy income label on it, right? You can print poly bags or different things like this from, um, I use Sticker Mule, by the way, for this. I love Sticker Mule. And um, because of that, you can print whatever you want on that. You can put custom packaging and you can create your own bundle brand to keep people off of your listing. So there's many, many ways that you can do that. Here's an example of some value add items. I found a bundle idea, now what? How do you set yourself apart from the competition, right? Um, adding a custom branded item or packaging will keep people off of your listing. So here's my favorite examples here right now. You've got the hangry kit and the hangry kit, instead of using a value add item, they create their own branding for their own box. So they have these snack boxes and they use their own beautiful custom packaging and no one can jump on there because they don't have their, their custom packaging. The second one here is a drink set. So you've got your martini bar drink set here. And what these people have added, which you don't necessarily see close up here, is these recipe cards. So with, with their drink set, they've offered a, a set of flip recipe cards that they created that teaches you how to make several different drinks. So um, you have that as a value add as well. And then um, to the far right, you see uh, tea with it also has this little tea bag that goes along with it. So you can put all of the tea bags into one container and it helps out. So all of these things were custom made or custom printed so that no one can just jump on your bundle. So although they're getting these things from the wholesaler, the one thing that they don't have um, is their custom item. And so that's how you keep people away from your listing and all of your hard work and research. So they have to go fend for themselves somewhere else. Thank you very much, competition. We don't want you. So why wholesale bundles? Why is it better than the rest? Because of this. 
because the numbers, the proof is in the pudding, right? I mean, I could tell you all day long how amazingly awesome wholesale bundles are. And of course, why wouldn't I say that? Because it's my system, right? Except for proofs in the pudding. These are the numbers. Uh, after starting over at the beginning of January of 2014, we were able to scale our business shortly but surely. And you'll see all of a sudden we start to grow incrementally and slowly. And we built ourselves. Now, mind you, we were a two-man show at this point. Two-man show going over my mom and I doing all the work and hard hustle from our house. We started with retail arbitrage again because we didn't know any better. We started building into wholesale, started adding the bundles. And as we started doing this, you'll see. You see the big gaps? You see the big jump and the big gaps here? Those are when we made major decisions. Major decisions like we're going to use a prep center instead of using that. And although you would think you would see a dip in numbers because you're paying more for a prep center. It freed up our time and energy to be able to spend more time on product research, which then grew our business by double. So if you invest in something, it can actually double your business. Who knew? Okay. And so bundles are better because they eliminate direct competition. You don't need to invent or reinvent a product. You can own the buy box 100% of the time. That alone is a game changer, but whatever. Um, and you can start with $300 or less. Can you really just let that sink in for a second? Most of you are spending more than $300 probably a week um, doing retail arbitrage or some other uh, business model. But yes, you can start wholesaling. You can start bundling for less than $300 for $300 or less. You do not have to import. You can, and of course that's always welcome, but you don't have to import anything. You can literally buy anything from where you are right now. You don't need to buy large quantities and you're protecting yourself against those wonderful hijackers who just want to ride your coattails of hard work. That that makes me mad more than anything else. It's like, I did all this work. Why are you jumping on my bundle? Um, so we eliminate that. So if these are the things that you want, wholesale bundle system is for you. If you want to eliminate competition, increase those margins and have really long-term sustainability, this is what it takes to do that. This is a wholesale bundle system. And it comes with that the whole system you'll see, of course, this is my framework. I literally have this laminated and on my desk. Like, I don't know if you guys can see my picture there, but like I follow my own system. Like without this, oh, I'm awesome. lost. So it comes with the framework. That is the framework, the, the research framework that you use. It helps you, it will create bundle ideas that cultivate vendor relationships and not necessarily exclusives, but I was able to get a wholesale account once after they shut me down three times online. I went to a trade show. I met with one of their people and I said, look, I said, I'm having a hard time getting my account approved online. I've done all these things, all that. The lady looks at me, she's like, what, what district are you in? Okay, Michigan, come meet Christine. I go meet Christine. Christine's like, okay, bypass situation allowed and she opened my account right then and there and that's only because I showed up in person and asked questions so cultivating vendor relationships is really important um, and you can create product it, the system shows you exactly how to create products and listings that actually sell even down to photography bundle image creation and even um, even how to do your listings and how to create your custom packaging because guess what I didn't know how to create custom packaging until I knew how to create custom packaging until I learned. And so we, we teach you that as well. So working on this business, this is my reality now. This is how Wholesale Bundles has changed my business all the way from thrifting and day one of books and retail arbitrage all the way to this. I work two days a week on my business. It's faster and easier product research with these steps and actually hands off. I don't touch inventory anymore. I don't have inventory at my house. I use a prep center, which is a game changer. I no longer have my decor as Amazon boxes. Like it used to be part of the decor, right? Because where else are you going to put all this stuff, right? Um, and I, you can work remotely. My mom snowbirds to Florida uh, most every year and she's able to do her part from there. I'm able to do my part from here and it can be remote and building a team to manage day-to-day -day tasks. This is the new reality because of the wholesale bundle strategy. I'm able to live like this. And you don't have to take my word for it. Half of some of my clients are right here. <laughs> some amazing people that have created wholesale bundles here. Um, particularly, they say some great things about the wholesale bundle system and all the ways that we hold their hand. And I'm going to skip a couple of these to get to the next one. So earlier, remember I told you to just to, to imagine what it's like to what, what would happen, what would change in your life if you had more time or more, more money or dare I say both? I mean, could you have more time and money? Imagine, because you don't have to imagine. If you can take action, you can make this your reality just like I did. Not fast, not easy, but surely doable with action. Remember this? It's a reality. 
You don't always have to start at the top. No one starts at the top, just so you know. No Ferraris going on here. So what do you need? What do you need? You need your roadmap to your seven figures. Your seven figures. Forget mine. Wholesale bundle system. Your consistent efforts. My support, of course, because I'm I'm just going to love you till the end. That's just how it's going to be. To know me is to love me. Uh, you're going to get showered with hugs and lots of fast words. And also never giving up. That is where you're going to get to your first million or your second million. Maybe you already made it. And these are just some other friends here that have said that they have tried a lot of different things, other courses out there. And to be able to marry this with some of the other assets that they have has been really life changing for a lot of people. You can read a lot of these and more at the Mommy Income website. And then, of course, this <laughs> Catherine's always like, why is my face always on your presentation? Because I love it. <laughs> That's why I worked her butt off and she's a huge success story and she just keeps growing and I just can't wait um, until she reaches her first million. She's well on her way. Um, and Catherine is here, but she's also this. She launched her very first bundle after working with me for a couple of months. She launched her first bundle in November and literally sold out instantly and has sold out of all of her bundles. She's made sense and this keeps recurring this. We're working on several more bundles she's launching month wow. after month and she'll probably have um, 12 to 15 at what, Catherine? Oh, an average of $18 a profit per box. Wow. Way to go, Catherine. She's a, she's, she's a rock star. So this is just, what, what would you love to do? Order products in your PJs and have them shipped to a prep center where they receive and prep your items and you never need to touch them. That's not a dream. That's real. Generating six or even seven figures while working a few, few days a week from anywhere in the world the reality. Real people with real results, not just me, other people. And this is where I want you to be. I mean, I want you to be the next face here, the next insert your success story. What is your journey going to look like? Because you know, it's messy, but it's possible. And so this is the wholesale bundle system. You can reach out to me with any questions you might have mommyincome.com slash system. I would love to chat with you guys about it. You get so much for the system. And thank you so much for listening to me and all of this presentation and all that kind of stuff. I just, I wish you the best of success in whatever you choose to do. And um, we're here for you. Thank you guys for letting me uh, take this time to present my story to the world. Thank you. Oh, yeah, that was it. fantastic. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so uh, we have a few more minutes. Do you have time to answer maybe a question or two? Or, Of course, bring it. All righty. Do you mind if you, yeah, I was like, please just make it be my face. Yeah. I don't want to look at this, this anymore. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. All right, from Baldy, do you use a repricer for repricing your products? No, I don't reprice my products. <laughs> Because I don't need to. I own the buy box 100% of the time, so I don't have price competition, so I don't need a repricer. I think that was the one thing that I was watching there, you know, in your presentation, and it was protecting your listing. And it was very, uh, very cool. That little, it could be anything, like you said, it could be the bag or your own branded product. And that's all it takes. And it was uh, it's like, wow, I hope a light bulb went off for a lot of people on that one. That's Yeah, and I, I love the idea good. that you could just have different packaging, just custom packaging yeah. and nothing else. And, and that alone can protect the listing. I think that's really yeah. cool. Absolutely. Charles uh, says, I've been at retail arbitrage for seven years, but I'm working too much for $150,000 a year in sales. Not great margins. Yeah, I think you hit home on that point. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking a moment of silence for Charles right now. <laughs> I feel your pain. I understand what you're going through. And I challenge you to, to look into wholesale bundles and see if that's something that can work for you because you shouldn't have to work that hard for that, that little chunk of change that you're getting. Uh, there's, there's more out there for you. Do I use a software to source my bundles? No, I don't use a software. I do use, okay. I use software to do the research of single unit items and what becomes a bundle. So my, one of my favorite tools for that is uh, Merchant Words. I love Merchant Words because it's straightforward in giving you search results and page one results and things like that, things that would be competition, but always remember that when you're using these software programs to find single unit items, it's a comparison of apples to oranges. So you can't compare a bundle to a single unit item. So I use Merchant Words to find the research numbers in order to see what single 
single unit item I want to start building a bundle from, but you can't compare their data with a bundle that actually doesn't exist yet because you didn't compare it to that. So um, just keep that in mind. But yes, I do use uh, Merchant Words and I also do use Helium 10 for other things within the bundle process. Do you need GS1 barcodes? Okay, so yes and no, and it depends. <laughs> so that's a that's a very that's a very straightforward <laughs> answer, right? Okay, so you can use GS1 barcodes. Um, by the way, GS1 is now selling single barcodes for th thirty bucks. So that's always a, a helpful thing. They're no longer thousands of dollars. Um, you can do either or. You can either buy GS1 codes and uh, build your bundles that way, or you can use a GTIN exemption. When you use, I suggest a GTIN exemption because then you don't need UPC codes, but you do need custom packaging for GTIN exemption. So if you wanted to create a bundle under the Mommy Income brand, and you show them this as your packaging, and then you have your bundle items in there, they will give you a GTIN exemption for your bundle brand, and then you can sell things in here with your GTIN exemption, and you do not need UPC codes in that point. But if you want to use UPC codes because you want to circumvent this uh, idea, you could certainly use codes, but even still now, Amazon starting to require if they've never recognized your brand, or even if it, you know if it's generic, not a big deal. But if if you're you know bringing a bundle brand to the table, you definitely want to um, do some sort of custom packaging. Oh, nice. And how do we get the suppliers from John? How do we get the suppliers? Well, you go to trade shows or you do trade show stalking, um, mommyincome.com slash 100. Well, you can watch a brief video there of how to do trade show stocking, um, which is going to trade shows, finding the exhibitors, looking at what they, what the suppliers and exhibitors have there and reach out to them via their website contact information. So there's all kinds of different suppliers out there. There's thousands and thousands and thousands and you just have to do some digging. Very cool. All right, so we're towards the end of this. Uh, well, one more question from Charles. You still have to have an Amazon label if you don't have a barcode? If you're talking about an FN SKU in order to send it into Amazon, you definitely need that FN SKU, yeah. yeah. So even if you have a GTI and exemption or uh, whatever, you just print the SKU just like you would an inventory lab or whatever, you print your SKU out and that's just fine. You don't have to have your own, like this doesn't have a barcode on it and I could just put my FN SKU on there. Awesome. All right, so since we're talking about bundles, uh, we're going to bundle up some swag now and uh, <laughs> Yay. See, what, see what I did there. Um, I saw what you did there, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I, that, that sounded like a dad joke. I, I have yeah, a oh, yeah. spot, for, don't don't spot for the dad jokes. My don't husband is like the king of dad jokes. <laughs> yeah, don't get me started there. Oh, my. All right, so uh, first off, we're going to give off a swag bag and... Looks like Robert Watson, you've won a swag bag. So we're going to bundle up a bunch of stuff and get that out to you. So uh, I should say this, email support at inventorylab.com with your name and address where we can send this stuff if your name is announced. And uh, we'll get that out to you. So then the second winner of a swag bag, you just got to wait for the wheel to spin here. And that's John Allert. So Robert and John, send us an email. We'll get those out to you. And now the Amazon gift card goes to, I need to get drum roll music or something. Um, <laughs> I'm like, I can create a fake one. Right? There you go. There you go. Uh, Claudia Maurer. Claudia, you've won the uh, $50 Amazon gift card. That's, you know, that takes care of a month of inventory lab or a part of the, Purchase price for the wholesale bundle system. So there you go. And that's that. Uh, again, thank you, Kristen. Appreciate you joining us today. Uh, it's been awesome having you here and talking about bundling and and your system. Oh, and, uh, I just want to answer that real quick Quick yeah. question there. How, how can they oh. reach out to me? You can find me at mommyincome.com. If you have right. questions, you can email admin at mommyincome.com and we'll happy to answer all the questions you have there. Um, there's also, if you're really just curious about the Amazon, we you know, my YouTube channel is full of a lot of questions you guys have here that we didn't get to. Um, just go check out the Mommy Income YouTube channel. There's a plethora of videos there that you can digest and um, buckle up because there's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Your YouTube channel is just full of information. There's so much information there that's just free. Just to, just got to have the time to absorb it. So, 
But again, thanks everybody for joining us. Thanks, Kristen. Thanks, Kim. Thank you very much. Appreciate you Thank guys you. Uh, taking time out of your day to join us. And uh, as always, we'll see you in a few weeks at our next one. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye, everybody.